Oh, Father, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to come, the opportunity to share uh, with my family, and I just pray right now that the words that I speak that are yours would enter the hearts of the people that need to hear it, and the words that I speak that are mine, that are my own silliness, I just pray they'd fall and everyone would forget them and go, what a great sermon, it was all God. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. So I get a fun opportunity. I actually get to speak to you two Sundays in a row. So buckle up. No, um, that means I got to go make, write a really long sermon and split it into two halves, which is great. Um, <laughs> I, when I was preparing for this message, and my first step in preparing for the message is to ask the Lord, what do you want me to speak about? Uh, immediately, I got it immediately. And uh, I said, ooh, this could be fun. But I want to remind and encourage all of you guys, this is a two-parter. So if this first part seems a little, and I hope it won't, but if it does seem a little hopeless or a little harsh or a little depressing even, there is a second part. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. This is an interesting subject. Love you, sweetie. This is an interesting subject. Um, so I felt the Lord just immediately land it in my heart, and so the first part of this sermon is called The Purpose of Pain. Yay! Pain! Woo! <laughs> exactly. It's a feel-good message, guys. Uh, the second part, so part two next. The second part, part two, is uh, The Promise of Healing. So together, this is The Purpose of Pain and The Promise of Healing. But I feel like before we can talk about healing, we have to talk about pain. It's something we don't like to talk about. It's something we like to avoid, actually. Our society seems to be primarily geared towards avoiding pain, medicating pain, however that is. I'm involved in a tense situation. I'm going to go home and I'm just going to zone out in front of the television. Oh, that person makes me feel uncomfortable, so I just won't talk to that person ever. How many of you guys can relate to that? <laughs> but pain is important in our lives, and it's a natural part of the human expression. In fact, this might be a little controversial. I kind of wish Joel was here so I could run this by the doctor himself. But I feel like we are so pain avoidant, we've even put it in our theology that pain is bad. How many of you guys, and this isn't a right or wrong answer, truthfully it isn't, but how many of you guys believe like there is pain in the garden? Yeah, how many of you guys? See, some of you guys said yes, there's pain in the garden. Some of you guys were like immediately. No, there wasn't. You don't think so? The Garden of Eden. You meant your own garden? Oh, the Garden of Gethsemane? Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean the Garden of Eden. Uh, how many people think there's pain in the Garden of Eden? No, maybe? Before. See, I see a lot of people going no, really strongly, too. Um. I don't claim to have an answer, other than I don't think no is the answer. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I think it's an interesting question. You know, in um, Genesis 3.16, when God is telling the consequence of the fall, and he's speaking to Eve, and he's talking about, we like to, one of the unfortunate bi biblical terms we use is curse, which is unfortunate. I, like to, I don't think God was cursing them. I think God was saying, here's the consequences of the action that you just took. When he spoke to the woman, he talked about pain in childbirth. Did you know he says there will be greater pain in childbirth? Interesting. That might open a door to saying there might, be, there might have been pain in the garden. Maybe not. Well, there's plenty of definitions of how we can define that. Somebody who will say, and this isn't a right or wrong answer, because this is one of those things that doesn't, I genuinely believe this is one of those non-consequential things. 
It does not affect your salvation. It does not affect the goodness of God to believe if there is pain or to believe there isn't. So this is a non-consequential. That's why I think this is fun. Um, it's a fun debate because it, it causes, we start thinking, what's, well, what, how do I feel? And like I said, there's no right or wrong answer here. I really don't believe there's a right or wrong answer. People that believe there isn't sin can look at that, ver- or there wasn't sin, that there wasn't pain can look at that verse and go, well, greater pain is anything over zero is greater pain. So you can look at it that way and say there was no pain. You can maybe look at it. Here's my thought. However it was at the beginning, I, I tend to be a little bit more natural. I don't know. Sometimes, even Charlie mentioned this at a group, or a conversation, I think it was at a guy's group that we were in recently talking about, there was you know, some beliefs about Adam and Eve like they were superhuman because there was no sin uh, and so there was no death and they, you know, the idea that they could use 100% of their brains and, and you know, I, it, I'm not against that thought. I'm a little bit more naturalistic. Um, what I look in the Bible personally is I see that I don't think there is decay I don't think there was death. I don't think they had aches and pains like that. I think a lot of the pain we think about has to do with getting older and getting those chronic stuff and the wearing away of our bodies. They wouldn't have to deal with that. But is it possible they walked by a tree and it scratched them and there was pain there? Like, Jeff, I think you said discomfort, right? I, I, think, I think there could have been. Why am I saying this? Because there's fun, it's fun conversation to have, truthfully. And then also, sometimes because we want to avoid pain and we want to believe pain doesn't happen or shouldn't happen, we can change and and take it all the way back to the beginning to try and somehow claim that. And I just want to introduce maybe a question of it's possible there was some form of pain. Now, part of that is there's good pain and there's bad pain. But we tend to just go, there's pain and pain is bad. Um, I just feel even if you consider then after the fall, obviously we all agree on this, after the fall, there's pain. So we can all agree on that. Because there's pain, I think we all need to understand it's natural now. It's natural for there to be pain. I think no matter how holy and amazing and wonderful we are, our bodies will break down. There's something called entropy in this universe now. We wear away, we, you know, I was having a family get-together. Amen for family get-togethers. It was the first one um, since COVID where we had the whole family, and it was so much fun, and we're talking, and we're talking about the year off that we had, and my brother, my oldest brother-in-law, who is 42, um, was talking about, I can't play basketball anymore. And I was like, why can't you play basketball anymore? And he goes, well, if I play, I have to go up a league. To the seniors league, you know, <laughs> up a league. And I said, why? He goes, because I didn't play all year. I can't get that back. I'm 42. And he's talking about, you know, you think about it and, you know, you, you see the rebound and you're like, eh. <laughs> and he goes, so I'm going to have to go up a bracket to the seniors, not senior citizen, but the, you know, older 40 and up league. And uh, I laughed and I said, I understand what you're talking about. I have kids and you know, if my kids were here, one of the things they, they were doing would be they'd look at these, you know, these steps and they would jump down them, right? And that's, uh, kids do it all the time. My oldest, uh, Ezra, has this amazing ability to look at this height, you know, foot and a half, two feet, two and a half, jump down and land directly on his knees and pop up because <laughs> he's made out of rubber because he's young and made out of rubber. And I look at it and I go, anything, and I was telling my brother a lot, anything over two feet, and I'm like, I could do it. Should I? Because you got to understand, I've broken both ankles, I've broken a leg, I've had tendonitis in both knees. From the waist down, I'm not the best. (laughs) So I go, even if I land it well, it's going to hurt. And that's if I land it well, and that's not a guarantee, <laughs> right? That's natural. I'm getting older. Things happen. Not only that, but it's natural 
in the sense that it's one of the promises of God. <laughs> Philippians 1.29 For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer on His behalf. So not only is it, I think, a physical, it's a natural thing physically right now, it's also a natural thing in our walk. There will be pain in our walk. Because when we talk about pain, it's very easy to talk about the physical pain, but we also have to talk about the emotional pain. We have to talk about spiritual pain. But it's necessary. I'm actually a little... Limited in my book, just a little bit, limited in my mobility because I'm doing this thing called working out and it sucks. It doesn't actually suck. I actually enjoy it in the moment. I enjoy it right afterwards because dopamine hit. Woo! Who doesn't like that? And then I wake up the next morning going, why did I do that? And I did a lower body two days ago and I'm still feeling a little bit because I'm getting back into shape. But you know what that is when you work out and you're sore and you're sore for a couple days, you know what that is? That pain, you know what that pain's telling you? Your body's getting stronger because the way you build muscle is you tear it. And the body goes, oh, we need to build that stronger because of the load that person is doing. The way you build cardiovascular strength is you do an activity to the breaking point that you cannot get enough air in, and your body goes, oh, we need to build it stronger so that they can have more oxygen capacity. So there's this very natural part of getting better that involves pain. How many of you guys play a musical instrument? How many of you guys play a stringed musical instrument? How many of you guys remember first learning to play that string? Piano players, whatever. Stringed musical instrument. <laughs> How many of you guys have ever burned your fingertips? You've learned what it's like to start playing a stringed instrument. Because you burn your finger. It hurts so much. I remember telling my... I've been playing for... I don't have fingertips. Like, I don't have fingerprints. I have calluses on this hand, my fretting hand. I've been playing that long. Um, my wife years ago was like, can you teach me some? And I said, sure. And she played for five minutes and was just like, ha, 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 how do you do that? <laughs> I go, yeah, that's how it felt. There, but that's pain. And we acknowledge part of the learning and growing process involves pain. You know, I teach my kids when they hurt themselves and they want to have a meltdown, I teach them, take a deep breath, calm down. It's okay to feel this pain. But now we need to learn how to interact with it how to manage it. We need to learn what pain is important and what pain isn't. My uh, middle son, Solomon, yesterday did something. He fell and he hurt his knee, and it hurt. He was limping. And I mean, his thing when he gets hurt is he stops. And, Ow! Ow! It's pitiful. I mean, <laughs> depending on how you feel, it would move your heart to compassion, or you just go, good grief. <laughs> Give me a breath. Ow! He can't move. He can't move because it hurts. Ow! You know, my first thing is, I'm okay, let's see, let me feel the leg, let me move it, let me put pressure, let me squeeze, tell me where it hurts. Ow! Ow! I'm doing all this. And this is, this is my son. He hurt his knee. Okay? Does that hurt? Yeah. Does that hurt? Yeah. Does that hurt? Yeah. Does that hurt? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's learn how to localize the pain. Where is the pain coming from? <laughs> I can't help you. You know, and I had to teach, you know, he's like, maybe Band-Aid in medicine? And I said, you're not bleeding. You're not getting a Band-Aid because I'm a great father. <laughs> Ow. Um, I go, bro, if you're, but if you're bleeding, I would give you a Band-Aid. Maybe medicine, but I still don't know if you're really hurt. <laughs> It's natural. And he learned. He had to learn to tell me where it was. He had to learn, is it, am I going to just sit here and wait till it feels better? It's kind of the one where you walk it off, you know, if you, like, a, you knock your shin. Like, that hurts, and you want to go <laughs> forever, but really you have to just kind of stop and walk it off. And you'll limp, and you'll limp, and then you'll feel better, and you'll feel better, and, you know, 
But he has to learn that. So I was like teaching him, and I was realizing as I'm doing this yesterday, I'm, t- I'm doing a sermon on pain. What a wonderful example of pain. You have to learn where it's coming from, what the cause was, and then you have to learn how do I live with it. Because there is some pain that's debilitating. I'm not minimizing pain. So there's pain that's debilitating that you need to stop and deal with. But there's also pain that sometimes we make debilitating. And really, we just have to, and I, I love saying this, suck it up, buttercup, in a nice way. And I don't, you know, but you have to go, and I remember I told him, I said, well, you have two options. Uncle Travis and Aunt Tati with Naomi, they're coming over for breakfast, so you can sit here and cry and, and then never move and stay right here until it feels better, but you probably miss them. Or you can get up, you can walk around, you can test it. He's like, okay. And he gets up and... <laughs> <laughs> and he really did hurt it. I'm not, but any, but you know what? Uncle Travis and Aunt Tati got there. Naomi got there, and he's like, "Hey!" And he gets out of the chair and he's walking around, and he's still limping a little bit. But it's like, oh! And as the day went by, the limp went, and then boom! And what he came up to me, my knee is feeling much better. <laughs> Way to go! I'm glad you conquered that pain. You see, there's. There's good pain and there's bad pain, and we have to understand what it is instead of just medicating it or numbing it. A lot of times we just want to numb it. Have have you guys ever heard of the disorder that affects the nerves so that people can't feel pain? I don't know the whole, I'm not going to try and pronounce the whole name. C-I-P-A, 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 C-I-P-A. They literally can't feel pain because their nerve endings are damaged and dead, so they can't feel pain. Have you ever watched a show or know somebody or seen it depicted? Like they have to, typically they need some help because every day they have to strip naked and look at themselves in a mirror and inspect themselves. Did I get scratched? Did I, did I bump something enough to bruise? Because they have to be aware because if they don't deal with it, it could seriously, it could get infected, a, a burn. I mean, it could really harm them. They could, they could walk around on a broken leg and not feel it. So they have to do this inspection and it's, I mean, they have to be so aware of everything they're doing. They have to like, because they can't tell because they can't feel. They can't tell if that cup of coffee is hot. So they'll just grab it and burn themselves. You know, it's, if you actually explore, it's like the idea of not feeling pain, which let's be honest, sometimes is like a fantasy. I wish I didn't have to feel this pain. It's actually terrifying because not feeling pain doesn't solve the problem. Because the first thing we should understand about pain is pain is never the cause. Pain is always a symptom. And if I numb the symptom, I'm not negating the effects of whatever is causing the pain in my life. I'm actually probably making it worse because I'm not addressing it. I'm not identifying it. Is this good pain or bad pain? You see, bad pain typically is something we can add something to it to make it almost always is bad. Chronic, (laughs) persistent, reoccurring pain. That's bad pain. And sometimes, some of it's unavoidable. Some of it is, I was an athlete and I wore this part of my body to the bone and it's going to ache. That's a part of living. And God can heal that and God can relieve that but a lot of times we don't even think or care enough because it just becomes part of our thing. And that's okay. I'm not saying that's bad. But the pain that's chronic, that we never deal with, that we can, but we want to avoid, that's the bad stuff. And a lot of times we, we, we medicate, especially physical, but it's the emotional stuff and the, and the uh, spiritual pain that's even worse. You know, I uh, had a friend, some of you guys probably know this story. I had a friend, uh, he was my he was a really, really, really good friend, not Travis. And he was literally someone that I considered a brother. And he, from my perspective, out of the blue, cut our relationship off. Just cut it off. And actually, in an email, we're like, it was like, you're a terrible person. You know, this is why I'm not your friend. Here's all, these, here's all your problems. Here's why I'm not your friend. And it totally blindsided me. And it, I mean, it wrecked me. I mean, I called my wife, who was not my wife at the time, and just, and she was probably the cause of this friend breaking relationship because you have that friend, you get a girlfriend, and your friends feel like, I never see you anymore. You're not valuing me. They're like, but a girlfriend, girlfriend. 
I don't understand. Come on, guys. Um, if you guys can, can think back to those youthful days. No, I'm teasing. Uh, but that was probably the, the, the root of actually the issue, uh, his own issues with abandonment and insecurity. And I suddenly had a girlfriend who, by the way, ended up becoming my wife. So good investment. But um, totally, I mean, I remember calling my wife up and just, he doesn't want to be my friend anymore. And because I had abandonment issues. <laughs> so it really hit everything. I'm just like, this person abandoned me, betrayed me. Um, and you know, you do what you do. It hurts and you live. You just live. And you think you get over it. You know, I, I was fine. As long as I never saw him again, I was fine. Because the problem is he was friends with me and my sister. So even though he said, I don't want anything to do with you, he was still friends with my sister. So for my sister's birthday party, he'd be there. Randomly that year, he was there for Christmas, I think. How? It's like, and I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just not going to be in the same room as him. And I, but if people ask me, I'm like, yeah, that hurt and it was sucks, but I, I'm okay. I'm fine because I numbed the pain. I avoided it. I said, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm not going to look at this. And I remember it took a home group, by the way, community, for me to realize it was not only did it still hurt, it was an issue, and there was a wound that needed to get dealt with, and it started me on this journey of healing with God. Because I remember I was at a Trailblazer game 20,000 people, back when you could do that, 20,000 people in a big old room watching the Trailblazers, and this guy pops up on the Jumbotron. And I'm like, whoa, that was, and I remember with Alyssa and family, and I'm like, that was, what's his face? And I'm like, wow, he's here. And not only this, I don't, I, I can't explain this. We're at a Trailblazer game. What are the Trailblazer colors? Red white, black. So when you're at a Trailblazer game, what's the predominant colors you see? Because we're all fans. Red, white, black. He's wearing a striped green sweater. <laughs> Do you know what that meant? That meant not only did I see him on the Jumbotron, but very quickly I identified him in the thousands of people. And he happened to be right across the, the, uh, the stadium. But I could see him. That green speck right there, that's him. And do you know what my reaction was? I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. Because that pain started, and I was like, I need to avoid this pain. I can't, I can't be in the same room as this person. I have to get out of here. And I remember being analytical enough to sit there and go, that's a weird reaction. What a strange reaction. And I stayed, but I was uncomfortable for the rest of the game because I knew he was there. And so I remember I had a home group, um, and I went to the home group, and I shared it as a funny story. <laughs> Can you believe this? What an ugly green sweater. Who would do a, wear a sweater? I just shared it as a joke. And I remember a friend, a good friend, um, Jennifer, Jen, um, afterwards went, wow, there must be a lot of pain there to have that kind of reaction. What? What are you talking about, pain? And we started talking and realizing, wow, there's such pain. And it really led me on this journey because I said, okay, instead of avoiding the pain, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to lean into it. Why am I feeling this pain? What's going on? And it led, literally led to this point where I finally had a 15-hour inner healing session with wonderful, wonderful people that I love dearly that are still in my life. And it came down to this root of when my father left my mother and me and my sister and that abandonment I had that did not allow me to have significant relationships. And it opened this whole world about how I lived and how I did relationships. I had friends, I had new friends every year I was in school. Because we'd do summer, we wouldn't see each other and it would just end the relationship. And I was okay with that. And I'd come back the next year and I'd make a whole new set of friends. The only time I had lasting friendships was when I got saved and I started going to youth group. Because here's people that I saw every week through summer. And that's why this guy hurt, because he was one of my first friends that I actually kept year over year, actually built relationship with. But still, that relationship was built on we saw each other all the time. And so when he cut it off, suddenly all those wounds came back. But I wouldn't have known that if I kept on avoiding the pain. And I didn't. It was years. This is years, by the way, where I had this massive wound 
And instead of pressing into it, looking at it, I avoided it. So that's bad pain. The pain we avoid, the pain we, we, we move away from, that's bad pain. But there is good pain, which is why we don't always throw it away. And we have to face pain and figure out where it's coming from. Is this the good pain or is this the bad pain? If it's the bad pain, I need to identify the cause and I need to start the process of healing the cause so the pain goes away. And if it's good pain, I just accept it, embrace it. You know, good pain is when I work out and I like work out to the point of failure and for like 30 minutes I can barely lift my hands. That's good pain because I know I'm getting stronger. We've got to understand, I think, three main important things about pain. Pain communicates. Pain communicates. If I'm that person that couldn't feel anything, I can do serious harm to me because I don't know if I got hurt. Pain communicates. So when somebody insults you and you go, ow, that's pain communicating to you. What is it saying? Is it telling you that person's mean? Is it telling that person's a jerk? Most of the time, no. We like to settle there. Ow, that person said something mean. They're a jerk. And if you're, you know, that's a Christian response. Sometimes we don't have Christian response. We use stronger words than jerk. But we actually have to look deeper into that and go, why did that hurt? What is that communicating? The, the pain communicates that you've been hurt. It communicates a weakness. What's up, Travis? Travis? Yeah. So pain not only just communicates something in you, sometimes it communicates something in somebody else. So instead of going, wow, they're a jerk, you might go, wow, why'd they lash out like that? So their pain is communicating something to me because they're lashing out. And that actually can open a door to compassion to go, why are you doing that? Not, ow, oh, that hurt. Wait, why? See, my wife does that to me. I don't ever do that to my wife. But um, my wife does that. No, no. I do this, you know, all, this happens, I think, in any relationship where you will, you know, react. They'll say something, you're just, and they're like, whoa, what happened there? And it's like, I, wow. So it happens to my wife because she's, you know, in my life the most. But she'll say something and I'll just react really defensively and come back at, well, you didn't do blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you know, I'm learning this phrase in, when me and my wife talk after an interaction. And it's actually really powerful because I'm seeing the pain but I'm looking past it to the cause, and it's a really big one. I think it's a common one to us. I go, wow, when you said that, I felt shamed. And so I reacted from that shame to attack you, to defend myself. That happens a lot. Because sometimes my wife isn't just being judgmental. She's actually saying something innocently, but it hits shame to me, and I think, you're judging me. But it's actually my own, issue, my own root issue, and the pain actually communicated to me that that's there. Pain protects. Why does, if I hurt my knee, hip, foot, why, why do I start limping? Why do I start limping? So, because it hurts when I do it. I'm protecting that part of me that hurts. I'm shifting weight. I'm trying to take care of it. Pain actually tells us what we need to protect. Not to the point of not healing it, not to the point of just avoiding pain. We don't protect to avoid pain. We protect to heal. So sometimes we like to say, oh, you need to cut that person out of your life. That person is toxic. You need to cut them out of your life just for your own self-protection. Um, I'm not against cutting off toxic people. I'm not against cutting off people that are drain and suck life from you. I'm not against that. But what I'm against is just that thinking that's the final answer. Because sometimes you do, to protect yourself. That pain is telling you this person is harmful. Not bad, but harmful. So to protect yourself right now, you need to remove yourself and protect yourself until you are to a point, or they are to a point, and that's the nice, uh, messy space that you get to navigate with God. What does that look like? Until I'm at either healed enough to the point where I can interact with that person, or that person's healed enough, they can interact with me, and how do I do that? This isn't a sermon about that, because that's... Christianity. Um, 
But so pain protects. Being aware of our pain allows us to stop whatever actions are causing the pain, especially if it's self. If I'm doing actions that are harming myself, that pain is telling me to stop doing that action. I don't stick my finger in an electrical socket for a reason. And God is amazing. I love, and I'm almost done, guys, but exploring pain with how our bodies, because if you just say, what, what I think is amazing, if you just say pain is a cause is because of the fall, I think it's amazing then that God actually puts so many mechanisms in us to handle it well. Because I think that's amazing. You know one of, my, one of the most awesome, amazing things? Childbirth. One of the most painful things a woman could do, let's just say the most painful thing, and yet your brain immediately starts forgetting how much it hurt to get you to do it again. That's amazing. That's am- I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a positive where this, this am- we were joking uh, a couple weeks ago, I was joking with some friends about hiking, and I said, I don't do hiking. And they made a joke about it. I said, well, last time I went hiking, I fell, I broke my leg, and I dislocated my ankle. I had to get carried out one mile. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> and I had to endure, what, half an hour car ride to the hospital? That's the last time I went hiking. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, it's called PTSD. Look it up. No, I'm... T- <laughs> and what, a half hour drive to the hospital where I'm in the back seat holding my leg. That was painful. Wonder why I don't go hiking? I probably should push through that pain. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's sucking up buttercup. And the last thing to know about pain, well, the second to last thing to know about pain, pain unifies. Pain unifies. I really enjoyed this analogy when I read it. I said, that's hilarious. How come if you're, let's say, you're handy and you're hammering and you hit your thumb, how come you immediately grab it, stick it in your mouth, jump up and down? Why are you involving all these other parts of your body? Your thumb hurts, but ah, oh, son of a, which helps. There's a study, cursing helps relieve pain. But anyways, ah, mm, ah. <laughs> pain unites. And I love that idea of it brings the whole body together to the thing that hurt. How many of you guys have been in a situation where you've been in a group and you revealed a hurt and that group draws closer to you. They support you in that. They want to help. How many of you guys have fallen and people have rushed to you to pick you up? Pain actually unites. It's, it's, and on a positive side, when we're open and honest, it actually can draw people in to help heal that pain. It can unite the body, people, communities. How many times do we talk about who lived through Pearl Harbor? Good. Who lived through 9-11? right? Who lived through the Oklahoma bombing? Who lived through any community tragedy? There is a pulling together because of that mass pain. I remember 9-11. I remember the reaction after 9-11. Because pain draws us together. It actually can be a uniter. And lastly, the most important thing about pain for us as Christians. There is healing. Pain is not supposed to be permanent, and it's not. God even has a healing for us for the chronic wearing down of pain because when we die, we get a new body that does not wear out that does not grow old. So even for the chronic pains that are a natural part of growing, God has a solution for us. But for the emotional pain, for the physical pain, for the spiritual pain, there is a promise of healing. And that is probably the largest, biggest, most important thing to hold on to when we are experiencing pain. There is a provision, there is a promise of healing for this pain. And with that, it ends, come back for part two, the promise of healing.
So Father, thank you so much that you are an amazing, wonderful, awesome Father who loves us, that you provide for us, that everything that happens in our life, if we turn to you and we follow you, you actually turn it for our good. And I just pray right now for hope. I pray for faith. I pray for peace. I just pray that if there's anything that got stirred up, anything that was negative, anything that was bad, Father, I just pray that you would come in and you would, uh, I just see you applying just the salve of your love. Um, and I just pray that the Spirit would come in and ease whatever is going on. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We trust you, we trust you, we trust you. And Father, we trust you. Help us in our trust. In Jesus' name, amen.